YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Taylor Talks Tales. Today I have a video for you. It's a fun one where I'm going to talk about some of my favorite books I've read so far this year because I want to celebrate the fact that I hit my 2020 reading goal in June. So I've read 127 books this year so far and the vast majority of them have been very enjoyable. There have been some, some duds in there for sure and some kind of disappointing reads, but for the most part I've had an excellent reading year. I'm on track to have one of the best reading years I've ever had. My best year I had was one year in college. I read 221 books in one year. That was a record and I honestly never thought I would ever beat it because once you hit the adult world and you're working and volunteering and you are dating people and you have friends and commitments and all of your other hobbies, it, you know, I just figured I would never beat that. I think this year I might be able to do it, so now my new 2020 reading goal is to do 225 books, so we shall see. Who knows what uh, the rest of 2020 will bring, but my goal is just to read as much as I can, and yeah. So I made the cutoff because I technically hit my 2020 reading goal earlier this week because I forgot to add two books um, onto the list. So at first I thought I hit it yesterday on the 18th, but I actually would have hit it on Monday. But anyway, I made this cutoff of the first 125 books I've read of the year, and these are my favorites. The video is going to be structured where I'm going to talk about my favorite books in order of when I read them. So I'm going to talk about January favorites, February, March, April, May, and a little bit of June. So anyway, let's get into it. I don't want this video to be too long. I feel bad the last couple of videos I've uploaded have been way too long but there's just so many books to talk about and I love to talk about books and could talk about them forever so anyway let's get into it here we go these are January favorites all right first up is The Secret Life of Souls by Jack Ketchum this was one of the first books I read in 2020 back in January which seems like a lifetime ago now um I picked this one up initially as a library book and I started reading it in 2019 but then finished it in 2020 and I really liked this book a lot. I didn't go into it with very many expectations. It's a Jack Ketchum book and he co-wrote this with Lucky McKee who wrote uh, the screenplay and he did the movie um, May, The Woman I believe and then there's some other movies he's done but he's really famous at least in my mind for May which is a phenomenal indie horror movie. I think you guys should go check it out. It's one of my favorites. and. I wanted to see what it was going to be like the two of them collaborating on a story and especially since the story sounded a little bit different than something that Jack Ketchum had done previously or Lucky McKee had done previously where the story focuses it's essentially a story about a girl and her dog we have Delia who is 11 years old and she's a twin and she's very beautiful and she is training to become an actress. She has acted in some commercials, but her parents are pushing her to have her big break. And then you have Katie, who's this adorable Australian cattle dog who is extremely loyal to Delia. They have this very incredible bond. And when a tragedy happens in the family, things start to happen, and I think you should just pick up this story not knowing anything more about that, because once the story takes off, it really takes off, it has a wonderful ending. I loved the ending of this. The first part of it is a little slow. Um, it took me a little while to get into it, but once I did, I really enjoyed it. And it's one of my favorite dog books. I love dogs, but I do find sometimes dog books can be a little cheesy sometimes, but I feel like this book didn't do that. And I just really liked the dynamic between Katie and Delia and like the family drama. And there's a revenge aspect to the story, and I love revenge stories, so this was just a very enjoyable read. One of my favorites of the year, not just in January, but just one of my favorites of the year so far. Next up is another favorite of mine, and that is The Fisherman by John Lagan. So, John Lagan, he wrote this book, and it got turned down by a bunch of different publishers because it was too literary for horror publishers and it was too genre for literary publishers but I'm glad that this got published because this one was fantastic. I have had this on my TBR for several years now and I am just I wish I had read it sooner. I think that a lot 
about some of my favorite books. I'm like, I just wish I'd read it when I first wanted to read it. But this was phenomenal. This follows two men. They bond over fishing because both of them have lost very important people to them. Main character, he lost his wife to cancer, and then his friend and co-worker that he starts bonding with lost his wife and his two sons. And they decide one day at the suggestion of the co-worker to go check out this place called Dutchman's Creek and there's supposed to be some very good fishing there. They decide to go do that but they stop by this diner on their way there where they run into the owner of the diner who tells them this very creepy story and I think that's all you need to know about this book aside from the fact that it is beautifully written. It is this really neat blend of cosmic and folk horror which I thought was really cool. You do not need to be a fan of fishing in order to enjoy this book, but if you do happen to like fishing and the outdoors, you will appreciate the various references to fishing and some of the scenes involving fish and fishing. And I just think it's a really powerful book that explores different types of grief, especially since the two main men experienced grief very differently. The main character his wife died of cancer, so he had time to say goodbye, and it was a little bit different, as opposed to the coworker, he lost his family very suddenly. So it was just, it was really interesting to see that aspect, and it just, it's very cool. It's also like a story within a story, and the way it's told, I thought was very unique and very cool. So this is also a favorite of mine, not just for January, but for 2020 in general. So I recommend you go check this out if you haven't. Next up is, when I did my big thriller binge, I I picked two. My top two from that big thriller binge, I would say, is The Kindworth Killing and Recursion by Blake Crouch. I don't own either of those books yet. I definitely want to own them because I want to own every book that I've loved so that way I can have this just really awesome personalized library. But by the time I was going to purchase them, I quarantine was already happening and I figured I would rather make sure I have enough reading material and then at some point know that I'll go back and get those copies. So, Kind of Killing, I was sucked into that story. I still think about it and I think it's on my list. I had it up pretty high but I actually think I would bump it up even higher now that I've had a couple months to think about it. It's very twisty and it's I think it would make a really solid, really cool movie. And it's one of my new favorite thrillers. I think it's really well done. I was intrigued by the characters and the plot is not predictable. There are a lot of twists and turns. It feels almost like a roller coaster ride. And it's just very gripping and it's a nail biter, page turner, you name it. It succeeded on all levels, I thought, anyway. So that was an awesome one. And then of course, Recursion. By Blake Crouch. This is my new favorite Blake Crouch book. I absolutely loved it. It is this science fiction story, but it's also a thriller. And it just blends the two really well together. And I think for me, I enjoyed Dark Matter and I really liked the Pines trilogy, but this one, it, it connected with me mainly because I have this just powerful fascination with memories and the way that this book played with memories and dream, well not dreams, but like memories and time travel and some other really interesting topics like that was super cool. I, and it, like the stakes get really high in this story too. You essentially first follow these two characters in different timelines and then at some point the timelines come together and it's really about figuring out why are all these people suddenly committing suicide in one, and then the other is figuring out how to prevent Alzheimer's with this chair that could potentially preserve memories and how they connect, and it was just really cool. I have a full review that I've already done, so I'm going to link that down below so you can kind of see a more comprehensive review, but that was also a favorite of mine for January. Next one, I want to mention this book. It's not a perfect book, but I really liked it. I also have a full review of this book on my channel as well. And that's Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. I still think about this book. This book, of all the books on this list, this is the one I do have the most issues with. It's not a perfect book. Um, especially, I didn't care for the ending, and there 
is one character, I did not like her arc at all. I think it's Mary Catherine, it, it, I don't know, there are just like some problems with it, but I still, the parts of this book that I liked, I really liked. The imagery and the descriptions and just so much about this story was really cool. And it was very unique and there's some horror tropes that I happen to really like that are found in this book. And I, I enjoyed it, especially I'd say the first like 500 pages are solid. It gets a little weird at a certain point, but I still finished it and I still enjoyed it. It was a 4 out of 5 star read for me. And I recommend you check it out. It's a fairly polarizing book. You can just check Goodreads and people are either loving it or hating it. But I think it's worth a try. I think it's worth visiting and checking it out to see if you might like it. Because if you end up in the liking it camp, I think this will be a very fun treat. And if you don't like it, at least you can say you've read it and at least some of the creepy scenes I think will stick with you. So this is also an enjoyable one and one that I'm still thinking of all the way in June now. Next one, I also have a book review on my channel already for this book, but that is Long Bright River by Liz Moore. So this one, I I read it also around the time when I did my thriller binge, but I didn't consider this to be a part of my thriller binge. One, because I read it at a slightly different time. I read it um, a few weeks apart from the thriller binge, but also because I considered this to be more of a slow burn police procedural mystery drama as opposed to a true thriller. And I think that is why some people may be disappointed with this story because they expect it to be this like nail biting serial killer, like really deep, dark, just intense roller coaster ride of a story when it's it's not, but it's still a very good book. It's well written, it explores so many contemporary issues, so many problems going on in America and just society in general are explored in this book because you pretty much follow a police officer trying to search for her sister after discovering a dead body and it looks like there may be a serial killer in this very poor part of town in Pennsylvania and she's trying to track down her sister who is addicted to opiates and heroin and several other different substances and her sister is also a prostitute and then she has disappeared and so the detective has to, or the police officer, she has to track down her sister while also trying to help out with this situation and balance motherhood and it's really an exploration of how sisters can be so different even if they are raised in the same home because they grew up in a house with addicts and then they end up being raised by their grandmother once their parents were out of the picture and the police officer she kind of goes the straight path and her sister becomes a full-fledged addict and it's just really interesting and well done and I do suggest giving it a shot just know it's not going to be a high caliber thriller like you know, The Kind Worth Killing or Recursion or some of the other books like Pretty Girls, um, pretty much any Karen Slaughter book is a non-stop ride through. Um, this book is not going to be like that, but I still think it's worth revisiting or visiting if you haven't checked it out yet. It's, it's very good and well done and heartbreaking at times and pretty dark as well. So you can check out my full review below. I'll link it in the down bar below. Now we are into February books. So February was not quite as strong of a reading month for me. January was very solid. February and March weren't... I, I still read 11 books in each month, but it still wasn't on par with January, April, May, and June, but I still read a few good books. All right, first one I want to talk about is probably my favorite fantasy book of the year so far. It's just right up my alley in terms of what I like in fantasy, and that is Middle Game by Seanan McGuire, which, cool cover. This is A Hand of Glory, which does play a role in the story, which is very cool. This one was awesome. I still think about this book a lot. It's been a few months now, and it's so fresh in my mind. I highly recommend it to pretty much anybody who likes fantasy, especially if you like dark fantasy or fantasy with a twist. It's very unique. It's a standalone as well, which is awesome. And you don't have to be a fan of Seanan McGuire's other work to enjoy this one, but if you do like her other work, you'll 
also probably like this one. And if you like her horror work, um, she also writes under Myra Grant, is her other pen name. And Into the Drowning Deep is an awesome horror novel you should definitely check out. But this one, it deals with twins. You have Roger and Dodger, which there's a reason why they're named that, and it's kind of a running joke throughout the whole story. Um, but Roger is gifted with writing and reading and languages. That's his thing. He is just off the charts brilliant at it. And Dodger, his sister, is gifted with math. She is super into math and games and chess, basically anything involving mathematics is her gift and she's off the charts as well. And they, you find out at the beginning, they were created, they're, they're humans but they're not, and you kind of learn more about them and their purpose and how they play a role in this alchemist who essentially wants to become God. He almost wants to ascend into godhood and control the universe. And it's just so well done. And it's the type of fantasy that I love, where it takes place in our world, but like a slightly alternate world to us, where there's magic and supernatural elements going on, but the characters are very human feeling. And I loved the relationship between Roger and Dodger, their siblings, and I'm always a sucker for a story that involves siblings, especially brother and sister, because I'm the eldest of four kids, and I have three younger brothers, and, you know, I'm always looking for a good brother-sister story, and I got that with this. It's just very creative, and pretty dark, too. There are definitely people who die, and there's some interesting thoughts about, you know, humanity and being isolated because you're super smart and so much there's so much going on I need to do a full-fledged review on this but this is one of my favorite books of 2020 and definitely I would say this is probably my favorite fantasy I've read this year so far it was just everything that I wanted a fantasy just check it all off and there's a book in this so it's almost like a book within a book. There are these like excerpts throughout the whole thing. And Myra, Gr uh, sorry, Sean and McGuire, who is also Myra Grant, but Sean and McGuire, she is writing a middle grade book that's going to tie into this book by basically expanding on these excerpts in the story. And I'm excited for that. I think it'll be really cool. It's called Over the Woodward Wall, and she's also writing under the author's name that's in this book. So it'll be interesting, and it really deals a lot with alchemy and I think alchemy is super cool so highly recommend this. Next up is also a book I already have reviewed on this channel so I won't talk too much about it but it's Creature by Hunter Shea. This one is a slow burn horror and I do mean slow burn it takes a while for the story to get going but that's okay because it's very very character driven essentially you're following a married couple and Kate the wife is chronically chronically ill and is in constant pain and it's due to like autoimmune disorders and some other stuff going on with her and it's a dive into the relationship between husband and wife and when they end up going to this cabin um, by a lake for the summer then things start to happen and weird weird stuff is going on and then things escalate but this is such a good story, very well written, and Hunter Shea, his wife, suffers from chronic illnesses and pain, so in a way I almost feel like he kind of put part of his soul in this, not to sound cheesy, but I feel like he brought that authenticity really into the story, you really feel it, and so at the very end when everything is happening, you're very invested in the characters, so I really enjoyed this a lot, and I will link the review down below, but this is very good next book that I read in February that I want to mention that was very enjoyable is Children of the Dark by Jonathan Jans. I mentioned this in my coming of age horror novel recommendations list. This was awesome. I loved it a lot. It's a very good coming of age story. It also takes place in the summer and there's a bunch of creatures and monsters in the story and I was very impressed with it. I haven't read a Jonathan Jans book before, but this one was very solid. It follows a boy. He 
lives with his mother and his sister and he pretty much takes care of his sister who's six, her name's Peach, and his mother is an addict and is kind of off doing her own thing most of the time, is not really a present mother at all. She isn't horrible, but she's just absent. And this summer, things start to happen. There's a serial killer that ends up escaping from jail and it looks like he's coming to their town and they're also mysteriously disappearances and things going on in the woods and I'll leave it at that but this was very enjoyable awesome awesome read all right last book of February that I read and absolutely fell in love with and highly recommend is A Heart and a Body in the World by Deb Coletti so this one it's a young adult contemporary novel it is my favorite one of the year so far I read this practically in one sitting and was just blown away just completely blown away by it. It follows this girl and her name's Annabelle and she has gone through some sort of traumatic event. You don't know what it is at the beginning, it slowly is revealed throughout the course of the novel, but there's one night where she is just getting some food and she gets into a panic attack mode while she's at a Dick's drive-in in Seattle and she just starts running and she realizes that she just can't stop and so she ends up running miles and miles away all the way to a town called Renton and then she talks to her mom and then she has decided that she wants to just keep running and she feels this compulsive need to do it and then she decides she at least wants to run across the state of Washington so she starts her run and her mom is initially opposed to it but her grandfather is very supportive and he ends up getting an RV and they you know travel along and you know, slowly but surely they bond and she starts to heal and kind of come to terms with some things that have happened. But I connected on this, I connected with this book on multiple levels, I think, because I'm a runner and I also live in the Seattle area. There are parts of this book where she's literally running through places where I've run and places where I live. Um, I mean, she, my mother's town where she lives right now is mentioned in this story and it's a smaller, Seattle area town so it was just really cool to see that like the author lives in the Seattle area and you can really tell um, and so I just I loved that and I kind of feel like this book was made for me because a lot of the issues and the thoughts and feelings that she has about overcoming her trauma and you know bonding with her family and running and challenging herself and just so much of this book really just I loved it it was just so enjoyable. I highly recommend it. Even if you don't like contemporary novels very often, I think this one is a good one to check out because there isn't really romance in it. There's like a teeny bit, but it's like a flashback to something and it plays a role in what has happened to Annabelle. Um, but there's, there, there isn't this like meaningless drivel of, oh, you know, this this girl, this guy, I hate them because they're cheating on me or whatever. Like, there's there's very limited teen drama. It really is just this really impactful story about this this girl and her family and running. And it's just so, so much fun. So, highly recommend it. All right, now we're into March books. So, to be honest, I didn't have very many books I really wanted to talk about in March. Um, main one, in fact, is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. I have a review for this already. I really enjoyed this book a lot. I wasn't sure what to expect when I went into it. I knew that a lot of people really liked this book and that was about it. It is different than your traditional haunted house story. It is much more than that. It follows these four authors who spend the night at Kill Creek, which is one of the haunted, most haunted houses in the United States or possibly even in the world. And events escalate after that and it's really cool because they spend the night on Halloween night as well and it was really well done I enjoyed it a lot I definitely want to get my own copy this is still the library copy that I've been hanging on to because we haven't been able to turn our books in since quarantine happened um, but I, I enjoyed it a lot it is pretty much everything I wanted in a horror novel and I recommend it and go check out my review next book that I want to mention is my Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This one, I I really enjoyed it. I, it's not one of my favorites of the year, 
on this list, but I still really liked it, and I think it's going to be a fantastic read for the right reader. And I, I do like it, I just, there's some other books that are higher up on this list the more I think about it, but I still wanted to include it on this list in this video. This one follows a girl named Vanessa when she's 15, and then when is she is 32, it's a dual timeline story where you follow her when she's 15 having this relationship with one of her teachers at this uh, prep school, boarding school that she goes to. And then it follows her when she's 32 after her father has died, so she's grieving her father, and then a bunch of stuff comes up with the Me Too movement and her reflecting back on her relationship with her professor and teacher. And it's really interesting because it's a dark subject matter, and so you go into this knowing that there are some abusive situations that happen. I mean, definitely statutory rape and whatnot, but it's really about her and her conflicting feelings about it because when she was 15, she legitimately thought she was in love with this professor, and her 32 year old self still kind of feels that, and she's trying to s see how she wants to approach this going forward and if she can heal by admitting that she was abused or if it's better for her to not think about that and I don't know there's a lot a lot of interesting questions that can be raised by this book I, I enjoyed it and the writing is very very solid so highly recommend it the other one this is a very fun book I think this was of the books that I read in March um, off Season by Jack Ketchum. This was just very entertaining, and I wanted to read this book for many years. Funny enough, I actually read the sequel before I read this one, and I don't know how that happened, but it makes a lot more sense now, and I want to go back and read that book. Although technically, I think you can still read the sequel without having read this one, because I did and kind of piece together what happened, but um, this follows this editor. She gets a cabin that's on this coast and decides to invite her friends over for a weekend and just have a lot of fun and kind of let loose and all that stuff. And it's the off season, so there aren't a lot of people around. And then they get attacked by this cannibalistic mutant family that lives in the caves on the coast. And then things happen from there. This is very fun. It's not one of Jack Ketchum's best, I would say, um, but it's it's gory, it's violent, it's entertaining if you like that stuff. It's pretty much border on splatter punk. And especially the edition I have is the uncut edition, so it it talks all kinds of stuff. Like, there's there's a lot of gory scenes, and I thought it was fun. And I recommend it if you're looking for that kind of intense book that doesn't hold anything back. That would be this book. Now we're into April. So first read, this is actually technically March going into April. I kind of finished it right around midnight of April Fool's Day, so this could have been a March read, but it also was kind of an April read. But that is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. I really enjoyed this book. I am in the camp of this was a five-star read for me, because a lot of people, it's very polarizing. You, I think, will either really like it or you really won't. I don't see too many people who are just like, this is just okay, it's either one star or five star. So I think... Y you should just ignore the Goodreads rating and just go into it for yourself just to see if you like it or not. Um, I enjoyed it. I love all types of horror, so the kind of surrealism in this story and the psychological horror and a lot of the, like, almost dreamlike sequences in the story worked for me, but it might not work for everybody. So that's why I do recommend just kind of checking it out. I want to do a full-fledged review of this book because I have a few suggestions on reading this book that may improve your reading experience as well. But the story pretty much takes place in one night. It is following this girl, she has no name, and her boyfriend and they are going to visit the boyfriend's family farm and it's in Canada and it's a very snowy dark night and then things happen from there, and I think this is the type of book to also go in fairly blind. You don't need to know too much about it and just go in and see if you like it. So I enjoyed it. Highly recommend it for all horror fans and thriller fans as well. All right, next up, I'm just going to talk about both of them at the same time, but two novellas by Keelan Patrick Burke. I really enjoy his writing a lot, but we've got Blanky and we have Sour Candy. So Sour Candy is following a gentleman 
who ends up with a kid one day and he things happen from there but this kid only wants to eat sour candy and he can only eat sour candy and things turn into hell very quickly and I really liked this story a lot of these two novellas this was my favorite one Blanky was still really good but this one was just paced and plotted perfectly it was the perfect length and I liked the mythology behind it and the elements of the supernatural and just like all the stuff going into this was super cool highly highly recommend it it's one of my favorite novellas now loved it and yeah I I can talk about Caelan Patrick Burke all day so far every single thing of his I've ever read has been great and then, of course we have Blanky and Blanky follows Steve and his kind of his wife but it's mainly focusing on Steve he lost his daughter his infant daughter had passed away just she woke up and she was dead in the crib and he's just really depressed he's drinking a lot he is just in so much emotional pain and his wife leaves because she needs to take time for herself and one day he gets he hears some noise in his daughter's nursery and he goes in there and he finds the blanket that she was buried in and then the story kind of goes from there and this one was also a very solid novella by Kaylin Patrick Burke. I think Sour Candy's a little bit stronger for what I personally like in a story but this one is definitely worth visiting and it's sad but spooky and creepy at the same time so it's a very good one. Of course we also have The Forgotten Island by David Sodergren. This is my fav uh, first David Sodergren, and it's my favorite so far. I've read all three of his books that I've bought, and I think all three that he has out. This one was fantastic. I had so much fun with this book. It really feels at times like you are in a movie, a really well-done horror movie. The writing is just, it's well done, it's fast-paced, it just gets you into the story, and there's there's a lot going on in this book and I think going into it fairly blind is the best way to go about reading this book but pretty much you're following two sisters they are in Thailand for holiday and they end up through kind of a series of events uh, they wake up on a boat after a night out with some people on the boat and they're heading towards this forgotten island and once they get there stuff goes down and it's really cool. I really liked the characters. I liked the relationship between the sisters and how the main character is a total badass. There are some things that she does that are just super cool and the ending was just, oh, it was so good. Um, it's my kind of ending, it was just well done. So much fun and there are a lot of references to different horror movies and couple different horror genres in this and every time I saw a reference I just got very excited because I'm like oh yeah this is great and it's not in an annoying way where it's like oh you know I'm just including this reference to pr prove a point it's in there for a reason so I highly recommend you check out Forgotten Island. Next up we have The Rue by Alan Baxter. If you like creature features, if you like B-movies, if you just want to read a really fun, fast-paced novella, especially when taking place in Australia, this is a great one. I just went into this book not really having very many expectations, and I just had so much fun. This is just a very fun book, and if you're just looking for something to entertain you, but does have a couple interesting and meaningful messages to it, you know, this is a good good read and you'll also learn a lot of Australian slang in this story and also, I mean, how can you resist this cover? How can you resist a killer kangaroo story? So, and this was just fun and I think the novella length was perfect for this book. If it was any longer or any shorter, I don't think it would have worked, but this just, it worked very well. So, I really enjoyed this one. So we have Of Foster Homes and Flies by Chad Lutzke. This is a wonderful little novella. I included this on my coming of age horror recommendations list and this is actually the novella that inspired me to even make that list because the coming of age element is very strong in this story and there are several references to other coming of age books and concepts in this one. Essentially in this one you're following a 
character name is Denny, and his mother, his awful abusive mother, dies in the middle of the night. And he wakes up and he has to make a decision about what to do. He really wants to compete in a spelling bee and he doesn't want his opportunity to be taken away from him because he's been planning this for an entire year. And he's worried about getting sent to a foster home because he doesn't really have other extended family he thinks would be able to take him in with the exception of possibly his aunt but he doesn't think that's likely so in order to put that off he decides to just not tell anybody that his mom died and her rotting corpse is in his house and it's just kind of him dealing with that and it's just well done it's not really I wouldn't necessarily say this is a true horror story it's more dark fiction because um, I feel like for it to be a horror true horror story I feel like it didn't quite explore the true horrors of having a dead body in your house. It focused a little bit more on the coming of age element to it, but I still really liked it and I highly recommend it. And it got me into reading Chad Lutsky's novellas and I think he, he just like Keelan Patrick Burke, succeed on writing novellas and horror and novellas just go hand in hand really well. So definitely check this one out. And then last one is Stephen King's The Institute. I enjoy this one a lot. It has to deal with this boy. His parents are killed and he's abducted and taken to this place where gifted children who have telekinetic powers of varying degrees end up being essentially used and abused for science and progress and things escalate from there. I, I enjoyed this a lot. Um, I'd heard a couple mixed things most most Stephen King fans really like this. I know my ex-boyfriend didn't care for it as much, which is one of the reasons why I put this off, but I personally really liked it. Very enjoyable. One of his better works in recent years, I would say. Although, there is another Stephen King book on this list that I actually would say is my favorite of 2020, so that is coming up. But this was very enjoyable. A lot of fun. Highly recommend it. Even if you aren't super into Stephen King, I still think you would really like this. And if you like Stranger Things, you'll you'll enjoy this. Oh, we are into May books. There are a lot of good books in May. Just like in April, I had quite a few in April. I also have quite a few in May. We have Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This was a very surprising thriller. I really enjoyed this a lot. It follows a girl named Pip and she's trying to solve this murder from five years ago where this boy that she knew who was older than her and she really liked him and thought that he was just this really kind, compassionate guy. He ends up getting implicated in the murder of his girlfriend and the story takes place, it takes off from there. And it has to do a little bit with racism in this small town and I just, I really enjoyed this story. I didn't have any expectations going into it because I've had some bad experiences with some young adult thrillers in recent years, so I just kind of went into it thinking, uh, hopefully I'll like it, but who knows. And I, I thought it was really well done. It was perfectly plotted and engaging, and there are lots of twists and turns, and it just, it worked. It just checked everything off on the list of things I want in a young adult thriller and just in a thriller in general. And I can't wait to check out more work by Holly Jackson. We have My Pretties by Jeff Strand. I really enjoy Jeff Strand. In fact, I've enjoyed all of his work I've read this year. I picked this one because I think this is the best done of the books, the three books I've read of his this year so far, but really enjoyed this one. And this follows two women and they are trying to catch a serial killer because the serial killer abducted one of the girl's cousins and she wants to see if she can either save her cousin or at least get revenge on the serial killer so she uses herself as bait and they are quickly drawn into a very bad situation and then it turns into survival and there's lots of fun in the story and I think what really makes this story the best of the three Jeff Strand books that I've read is that I really liked the dynamic between the two main characters and I feel like the characters were the best developed in this story as compared to the Haunted Forest Tour um, but the Haunted Forest Tour had awesome monsters so it was like kind of a toss-up but this one ultimately went out just because I think it's 
just really well done and very funny at times. Um, there's just this certain sense of humor that a lot of Jeff Strand books have, and I appreciate the humor, and it worked for me. So I recommend giving Jeff Strand a shot. Any of his books are good, but this one was, I think, my favorite of the year of his books. Next up, Blackwater by Michael McDowell. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because I already did a review on it, but this is a southern gothic epic story. There's so much going on in this awesome, awesome novel, and I just think you should really go check out this book as soon as you can. I think the vast majority of people will really, really like this story. Just know going into it, it's not super scary or horrifying. It has more horror elements to it, but that doesn't mean it's not a good story. It's a fantastic, very enjoyable story, very gothic, and a very interesting historical piece and has some cool supernatural elements, but, you know, just, just know you're not going to be biting your nails the whole time, but you will be sucked into this very small town and all the shenanigans that all the members of this family get up to. Next up, we have Dear Laura by Gemma Amore. Another novella I really absolutely fell in love with. Very, very creepy. I highly recommend it. It's following a woman. You know, it starts out when she's a teenage girl and then she progresses over the years to, you know, by the time the story ends, she's in her 40s. And it's about her correspondence with this uh, serial killer who killed her friend Bobby. She wants to know where he's buried and a little bit more about what happens. And so this guy kind of drags her along and requires her to do certain things. And at first it's like, give me a pair of your panties, give me one of your used sanitary pads, but then it escalates very quickly into uh, other stuff that I don't want to spoil. But it it's very good, very creepy, solid writing. And I have already been checking out some of Gemma Amore's other work, but highly recommend it. Next one is Stephen King's If It Bleeds. This is his novella collection. There are four novellas in here, and between this and The Institute, I would say this one, I liked this one a little bit more. I think the stories just connected with me very well. Um, it was hard for me to choose which novella I liked most. I think I really liked Mr. Harrigan's phone, um, and If It Bleeds... I liked the concept of If It Bleeds a lot, and it also ties into the Finders Keepers, or Bill Hodges trilogy, and I thought that was very cool, but but all of them were good. Like, that's the thing, is it's, like, hard for me to do that, um, but a lot of them were pretty relevant to things that are going on today. Highly recommend it, and I definitely need to do a full-fledged review of this book at some point, but this is, I'd say, my favorite Stephen King book of the year. And also one of my favorite uh, collections of stories or novellas. Next up, we have Folk of the Air Trilogy by Holly Black. I enjoyed this whole series. Really recommend it. I need to do a full-fledged review on this, but this is my favorite series of the year that I started and completed in the year. Because I do want to say that um, I really enjoyed Dresden Files. I am working on a specific Dresden Files series right now but I read the book of the series last year and finished reading up this year and I didn't want to um, include any of the single books on here. But anyway, I enjoyed this. Recommend. It's a very good YA. Last one, Brandon Sanderson's Warbreaker. This was very enjoyable. Great fantasy. Also a fantasy standalone, so that was a plus for me. It was a Great story, and I think it's one of Brandon Sanderson's underrated books. Everyone always talks about Mistborn and the Stormlight Archive series, but I feel like a lot of people don't tend to mention Warbreaker as much, but I think you should really give it a shot. In fact, if you haven't read any Brandon Sanderson books and you aren't quite ready for the commitment of a series or one of his like massive Stormlight Archive books, this is, I think, a good place to start, and I, I really liked it a lot. Very, very enjoyable. Oh, we're into June. So I already know I'm having a wonderful reading month in June. I've just picked a couple. Slowly We Rot by Brian Smith. I already know this is going to be a favorite book of mine. It was phenomenal. It's a zombie story, but it also isn't because there's, there's enough zombie action to keep it exciting, but it really is a character study and 
there's just so much going on with this book. I really connected on it on several different levels. It's it's hard hitting at times and it's very dark and there are some aspects of it that are kind of bleak and sad, but then there are other aspects that you know, there's there's enough hope in certain chapters that keep me going and it just makes you think. It's a very thoughtful thought-provoking story and I definitely need to do a full-fledged review on this but pretty much the story follows a character named Noah who has been on his own for several years in the mountains in Tennessee and one day his sister comes back and she is very angry, kicks him off his land and he decides to journey across America to see if he can find his one of his ex-girlfriends that he was absolutely in love with but things don't go to plan and he has to come to terms with loss and a bunch of other bunch of other things and really too this is a story about a man's descent into his really bad alcoholism like it's 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 hard to watch it's hard to read it's hard to read his mental disintegration as well um so it's hard hitting book just be prepared it is not a light and fluffy read but it was very good all right two novellas we have out Behind the Barn by John Bowden and Chad Lutsky. And then we also have The Pale White by Chad Lutsky. Both phenomenal novellas. This one is just such a cool concept. You're following these two boys. They live on this farm with their mom named Maggie. And one day she brings somebody home under a sheet. And next day they wake up and... This person's a little off and a little weird, but they're hoping to bring her into their family. And you don't want to know any more about that story. Just just go in knowing it's awesome and very cool. And I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a very unique and fun concept. And just really, really neat. And then, of course, The Pale White. This one was just a very impactful story. I loved the ending. It was just very heartbreaking. You're following these three girls. They are trapped in this house with this awful man who is pimping them out. Um, they are all under age. One of the girls is nine, and it's they decide to plot to kill this man and get out and escape into the world. And it's just the story goes from there. And the relationship between the girls, I think, makes the story. It's heartbreaking at times even though it's a novella there's a lot put into the story even if it's a fairly simple straightforward story it's still you know I I really liked it a lot and I was just drawn into the characters the characters are really well developed and you know definitely trigger warnings for s certain things like sexual assault and sexual abuse even though it's not really graphically shown but it's talked about and implied and there's there's some other stuff but you know very very good one of Chad Lutsky's best I would say all right only a couple more Sundown Motel by Simone St. James this is a contender for one of my favorite thrillers of the year I really think it's cool when you combine supernatural elements into a thriller I know a lot of people don't like that but for me I, it doesn't matter if there are ghosts in a, in a thriller I think it'll still be really cool and this follows um, two characters you have Viv who is in the 1980s and then you have her niece who is in present day and trying to solve the mystery of Viv's disappearance and also what's going on in the Sundown Motel there are ghosts, murderers serial killer, all kinds of things happening with this story. I really liked it. it. I really liked the hotel and I liked the town and I, I just kind of was picturing almost like a town like Twin Peaks for some reason when I was reading this so I, I enjoyed it a lot and highly recommend it. Especially if you are a th horror fan who wants to read a thriller I think you would probably like this even if it's not super horrifying really. But if you do happen to like ghosts, like for me, I love a good ghost story. I also like a good serial killer story, so it's just, it worked really well. And last but not least, this is in the contender. I think this is probably one of my favorite novellas of all time that I have ever read. I can't wait to do a full-fledged review on this story. But that is To Be Devoured by Sarah Tantlinger, or Tantlinger, I think it's Tantlinger. Oh my gosh, this was 
fantastic. This right here is what I want in the story. It is messed up, it is brutal, it is filled with beautiful writing, it is filled with a very complex relationship and a complex character. The main character, Andy, I both loved her and was horrified by her. I felt for her, but also was like, WTF are you doing sometimes? It, it's great. Pretty much this book follows, or this novella follows Andy and her slow, but then all of a sudden very rapid descent into just completely losing her mind and being obsessed with wanting to eat carrion and being obsessed with vultures, but it's a lot more complex than that and I feel like it's just so well done. I loved it. I absolutely love this book. It's great. I, it's only 131 pages. It just flies by and I could read it over and over again. I feel like it's, it was just great. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of the movie Excision. If you've ever seen that movie, I highly recommend it. It was great. It's a little tricky to recommend at times because it's very niche, but the element of this woman, in, in Excision it's a teenage girl, but in this it's Andy's a woman, um, but kind of being slowly consumed by an obsession and then things escalating very quickly into something pretty horrifying. I feel like the parallel between those, you know, I, I saw the parallels in Excision and in this novella, but I really liked this story. I think it's great. Can't wait to do a full review on it, so stay tuned for that. It'll be coming up, but I think this is one of my favorite novellas, not even just of 2020, but just that I've ever read. So, highly recommend it if you're looking for something dark and messed up. Like, it'll, it, it delivers on its promise of it being messed up. It was awesome. There's one scene that actually got to me, and I feel like I tend not to get grossed out by much, but this one got to me, so, in a great way. So I highly recommend it. Five out of five stars. Wonderful. Fantastic. Alright, thank you so much for watching my video. I'm sorry this ended up being a little bit longer than I anticipated, but there are just a lot of books to go through. It was so hard to choose favorites. Um, there were a lot, there have been a lot of really good books that I've read, and so trying to select which ones that I wanted to talk about was very tricky. So anyway, thank you so much for watching my video. If you see any of these books you want me to do a full-fledged review on, please let me know. Also, if you are interested in me possibly doing my least favorites of the year so far, I can also do a video like that. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, rate, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later.